What's up guys? Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about observers. So observers are blocks that you can place in the world. Um, they have a little face and it will face away from you um, the first time you place it. The other side, the opposite side of the face, has a redstone uh, wire here. And this is where you can grab any redstone signals that it generates. Now the block itself is a little bit unique in that it will block light. Um, so if you go down here, the light under there uh, would be zero. It also allows, I didn't know this, it allows mobs to spawn on top of it. I've never had any mobs spawn on top of it before, but I could see that being an issue for like flying machines and stuff. Um, I've never had that be a problem, but apparently that is technically something that they can do. Um, otherwise though, it will behave like a transparent block where if I have a redstone signal, um, so I have, you know, dust, I can put an observer on top of it and then put dust on top of that. And it will allow the redstone dust to travel up, um, unlike an opaque block, where if we tried to do that, it would uh, cut it off, right? Um, so it's unique in that sense. It acts like a transparent block, even though it can like do other opaque properties. Um, it also, just like a transparent block, will not allow you to send a redstone signal through it. So we use a repeater to send it in. It will not go out on the other end, whereas an opaque block would. Now the meat of observers is that observers will uh, take the block in front of it, uh, the block in front of it being the one where the face is facing into, and it will emit a redstone signal from the back when it detects a change in the block in front of it. Uh, so for example, if I put a piston here just to kind of demonstrate it, if I place a block in front of it, that will count as a block change because I'm going from air to gold. I could also get rid of it. I could place redstone dust. Um, I can power the redstone dust. Um, and I didn't get rid of the redstone dust. I just kind of changed its state there and that counts as an update. Um, likewise, I could put a redstone repeater in front of it and changing the delay also counts. We could put a piston and it would, you know, it can extend or retract in front of it and that would also count. I could put a dispenser and powering the dispenser where it would shoot something counts. Um, also unpowering a dispenser or a dropper counts as a block update, even though the dispenser and dropper won't do anything when you unpower them. Um, it just like changes some internal data to it or something. Now, what constitutes a block change or block update, um, depending on which version you're using, is very, it's a very long list and it's also a, a really hard to predict. Um, there's just a bunch of different stuff that can cause it or not cause it. Um, I say the fastest way to know is to just test it. Um, you can just like go and put something in front of it or change something or do whatever you need to do to figure out if it's going to do it. Um, because the list on like the wiki or in other places is a little hard to parse. Um, it also depends on which version of the game you're using. Um, so for example, Java edition has quasi connectivity. So I can do something like this where I can power the dispenser from glass above it. And now the glass isn't actually powered, um, but the dispenser still gets the powering, right? And it, the observer will know that and it will power it. Um, this isn't necessarily a difference in the observer. It's just a difference in uh, how blocks get powered. Um, but I do know another difference, for example, is Bedrock Edition will know about item frames. If you do an item frame and like put an item and like rotate it, um, I don't know if it's an item frame directly on the observer or if it's like one on, on like a block in front of the observer. But Java Edition doesn't do any of that at all. It doesn't like it doesn't notice that the item frame exists. Whereas in Bedrock Edition, it will. Um, so there's a huge amount of differences. Um, so care should be taken when you are, you know, working with tutorials or anything, and the game version might be different. Um, I know another thing that observers can observe also is things such as crop growth, um, sugarcane aging. So not necessarily sugarcane growing, but sugarcane has like an internal age. Uh, variable and that changes will affect the observer. So now the redstone components of it, um, or the characteristics rather, um, I will, I'm going to move it just to get it into the sun. Not that way. Um, so from the back, when it detects whatever change it's going to detect in order to power it, um, it'll wait one redstone tick, which is two game ticks, and then it will power the redstone behind it for another redstone tick. Um, and only redstone tick. So it's as fast as it can be. Um, so I place a block there and then it will wait uh, the minimum amount of time before it powers anything. Um, this can be extended using repeaters. So if it's too fast, you can like kind of extend it using a repeater like that. Um, it'll of course go slower. Um, that's just kind of the trade off there. 
In Java Edition, we also have the ability to use one tick pulses, and this is kind of how our flying machines are built. Um, this isn't unique to observers, but just one tick pulses in general. Um, a sticky piston will leave the block um, that it's pushing if the uh, if the signal is one tick. This doesn't happen in Bedrock Edition, um, and this is why some of the flying machines are kind of annoying to build in Bedrock Edition. Um, but this is highly useful uh, for observers to be able to do this. Um, in Bedrock Edition, the one tick delay between when it uh, detects whatever changes it's going to detect and when it powers the redstone, it should be one tick. It should be the same as Java Edition, but it's not. Uh, there's a bug that was posted in 2016, and it still exists, um, and it will actually wait another redstone tick. So it'll um, wait two redstone ticks instead of one before powering this back redstone here. Um, I'm not sure if the bug will get fixed. Um, it might because it's a bug, but just be aware of that. Um, if it's delaying a little bit longer, that is probably why. Um, but if it gets fixed, uh, good. And just be aware of that. It, it could get changed. Um, so if you have something that relies on that delay, just be careful. Now, there's another fun thing with the observers is that observers will also take their themselves getting pushed. Um, I'll use a sticky piston as a block update. Um, so for example, if I put redstone here, so when I push the observer here, it'll be right in front of the redstone. Um, I can put a piston behind it. I'll put a block in front of it too. Um, if I push the observer here, it'll then detect that it's block, the block in front of it has changed. Um, and it will emit a redstone signal after it has like arrived to its destination. Right. So it does something like that. Um, the fact that it does the signal after it arrives is useful for flying machines mostly, but also just in case it gets moved. Um, it allows you to do things like this. Um, likewise, if I uh, were to bring it back, it will power this one now. Um, okay, it will, but it got rid of the signal there. If I do this, <laughs> if I do this, it'll do it. Okay. Now, observers are treated just like most blocks, where they will get stuck and be moved with slime blocks or honey blocks. Um, so we can have a piston that pushes all of these things together. And this is particularly useful um, with the thing that I just showed where they will um, up, they will count to themselves as getting pushed as a block update when they land. Um, as well as this allows you to make the flying machines that we all know and love, hopefully. Hate, love, hate relationship. Um, so if I make a flying machine where I, you know, put an observer facing out, the redstone goes into a piston and then I have these ones and I do the same thing. Um, I can have a contraption that can self propel itself. Um, I'm going to grab some obsidian so I can have it not run away from me. Uh, let's go over here. Um, Obsidian just lets it where the, uh, it stops the flying machine because the pistons can't push it. So in this kind of contraption, I can power this observer to kind of start it up. And what it'll do is it'll push this section right here um, one block over. But then when it lands one block over, this observer will detect that as a block update. And then it will power this one, which will then pull this section back. And then when this one lands, this section, it will then just start the cycle over again. So I do that, it'll just kind of go like that forever until you stop it. Um, and this is why this kind of thing works. Um, it's very useful. Uh, this is a Java Edition flying machine because uh, I'm on Java Edition. I'm not sure if this one works in Bedrock Edition. Um, that's not. I don't think that's the observer's fault. I think that's the piston's fault. Um, but this might work. I don't know. Uh, I know there are flying machines in Bedrock Edition that have that are similar to this. But this is something that observers are very useful for. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.